but we learned that 76% of the program participants are females and a whopping 61% of those participants, of all participants, have children under the age of 18. And so as we engage at a national level in this conversation about how to most effectively end childhood poverty, programs like this of guaranteed income have to be in serious consideration. And so 61% of the participants have families with children, but also, interestingly enough, the median reported income for the participants in this program is $913. Let that soak and sink in for a second. The median reported income, so basically the average family participating in this has a monthly income before this program of $913. Doing some rough math, that's probably about um, maybe $11,000 a year. And can you imagine for most, most Rhode Islanders, raising a family with children on $913 a month. So this $500 a month uh, of guaranteed income doesn't sound like a whole bit, but when you consider that that's about a 60% increase in a family's monthly income, it can certainly mean the world and, uh, um, and, change, and change a lot. I also remember when we all first heard about this, a lot of questions, is there the need, is there the interest, whatever it is, 4,000 applications for 110 spots answers that question. So we've already answered some of the questions to validate and to make this guaranteed income pilot very exciting. Uh, the next time we're here, I'm hoping that we'll see the results, we'll have statistics and data and a lot of affirmation. But I want to reinforce the importance of this now um, beyond just what we thought it was even that, not that many months ago. So we've got millions, billions, and trillions of dollars coming from Washington, D.C. We've got needs that have been exacerbated, that have grown, that have multiplied because of COVID. And they didn't start because of COVID. We had homelessness and food insecurity and all these other things well before that but they were exacerbated and they hit the communities and the communities of color that least could afford to get hit. And now what do we have? We have inflation, right? So everybody that says, oh, people are getting plenty of money, they don't need any more money, they don't need help uh, making ends meet, they're just wrong. Finally, our leaders in Washington have stopped and acknowledged that it is not transitory. It is here. I've been around a long time. I was a banker for many years. This is the highest inflation in 30 years. So it's wonderful to get infrastructure money to build roads and bridges. If you can't afford the gas to drive the car, that doesn't do you any good. The Thanksgiving dinners that hopefully most people got to enjoy some form or fashion were 14% higher in cost than they were the year before. We talked, we were talking about homelessness, we talked about housing. Faster than we can even think about solutions the cost of land, the cost of labor, and the cost of materials is going up and up and up while we're still trying to figure this all out. So this takes even on more importance